spoken to you on NBC for a while, so I'll have to run it by you. Do you think there's ever any chance, I'm not talking about the upcoming playoffs, but any chance in the future that you'll coach Michael Jordan again? In my, I think in my heart of hearts, I think that his basketball career is over. It's a decision. Oh, say, can you see moments in NBA basketball, usually the opening game of the season, the playoffs, seventh game of the series, the finals. I don't know about you, but I got the goosebumps for this one. This is very special. Interesting, and it is home team privilege how they did defuse the introduction of Michael Jordan, making sure that the Pacers got their due very quick in ending the announcement, letting the crowd respond as they did, and then getting right to the Indiana Pacers. Derek McKee of the Pacers controlling the opening tip. The officials, Dick Pavetta, Ken Maurer, and Ed F. Rush. Mark Jackson guarded by B.J. Armstrong. Michael Jordan on Reggie Miller here at the start. And Jordan comes up with the ball. Uh, Michael Everlander actually was knocked loose by Will Perdue, but Michael's so quick right now, he looks lightning quick. Well, he does have the fresh legs. Not in outstanding basketball condition, but in very fine physical condition. Here is Tony Kuko dumping it off. Will Perdue pops it out. Michael Jordan looking for the shot. Not able to hit on his first. By Jordan played by Jackson to the spin. Oh, oh. Rebounded by Rick Smith. Well, Phil Jackson told us earlier he was concerned that the Bulls will be looking too much for Jordan. Red speed to Rick Smith. Uh, Purdue actually giving him too much ground here, but then the quick hands of Michael jo uh, Jordan to come up with the loose one. Both shots that Michael had taken have looked smooth and nice, just haven't dropped yet. Another team on Smith's got it out for Jackson. Rebounded by Dale Davis. And here is Smith. 
Well, the NBA Player of the Week this past week, Rick Smith. Led by Jackson and that double team. Here is Kukoc fighting Pippen for three. Get the idea that the Bulls are a little rattled here at the start as Miller is able to go all the way. Well, Larry Brown wants his wing players, Derek McKee, and this man, Reggie Miller, to get out as well. And at Phoenix, while Chicago Friday night at home beat Milwaukee, Bulls coming back from a 15-point fourth-quarter deficit for the Bulls, a rare fourth-quarter comeback. That has been their problem, in particular in the third quarter. Here's Pippen, got the step, equal count, and the foul. Interesting that time, Marv. The Bulls came down, get some driving scenes. Here, the quick give and go from Purdue to uh, Scotty Pippen got a favorable. They're opening six shots. Six to two, Indiana. Third meeting of the season between these two clubs. They split the previous two. Jordan to see if they can't get him inside or get fouled. He's probably not going to get fouled on too many fadeaways. Michael, I have a feeling, is going to start taking the ball to the hoop. Mark Jackson for Scotty. Right clock at eight. Miller from way downtown. Davis gets inside. So Chicago continues to have difficult. Jordan fires. Earlier this week, in fact, missed a game because of that. Here's Jordan, and he's rejected. Purdue. Kuka. Six. Armstrong for three. Yes. Hopefully to do a good job on the defensive boards for Chicago. Jordan backing his way and then throws it out. Here is Pippen extending. Scotty Pippen with a strong move. In here in Indianapolis the last 24 hours, more than 200 additional media credentials were needed. As McKee is able to hit out it by Rick Smith. Jackson, McKee, drive the reverse, kept alive by Miller, feeding Jackson. He changes his mind in a beautiful look for Derek McKee. Again, Mark as well, especially in the sister turnover area. Pippen, on the back tap taken by Purdue, Jordan gave up the shot to Pete. Scotty Pippen. And Michael knows that he's about to come out. He sees Pete Myers in the way. Mike Jackson has five assists in this opening quarter. Miller. Miller. Michael had in mind, but a long way to go. Motions of the event and came out and played their game. Just having a very difficult time getting off. <laughs> Making the adjustment with the return of Jordan. Armstrong hits the three. And the Pacers now lead deep ball club. They go basically with a 10-man rotation. Here's Fleming with a front clock running down. We back Smith. Four for Chicago right now. Not a lot of firepower. Just B.J. and Scottie Pippen. And Pippen drills it home. 23 quarter. And have to be excited and thrilled with only being six points down for as poorly as they played in that first quarter. Well, they started about one for 12 from the field. Scott. That's a three-pointer. That's a subject that we have touched on on a number of occasions when we've seen the Chicago players. He Myers is able to hit the jump. He's looking down low for Rick Smith, who was well covered. Now McKee went to the turnaround. It's in the front. Here is Jordan getting the step. And Smith with the rebound. Jordan breaks up the outlet. And that's the old Michael Jordan there, coming out of the back. Against Indiana. Here's Longley. A wild shot by Longley. Fleming for Mitchell. Smiths. Yes. Pacers with their biggest lead of the game. Amazing. A little jumpers in the lane. He can step out to 17 feet very nicely. Jordan. Try to give it up. Although that might have been called. Well, Rick Smith's very comfortable when he steps out to the perimeter. And it's very difficult for centers to get the feeling. Of a foul, the second here is Jordan. And still looking from the crowd. Well, this might not be the way Michael Jordan in. Michael 
getting more aggressive defensively. Open shot for Mitchell. Attempt. Here's Mark Jackson. For five minutes, remaining first half. Antonio Davis rejected by Will Perdue. Kept alive. The key. The key off the boards. Oh, you know that's driving the Chicago coaching staff crazy. You cannot get that many opportunities. The Bulls rebounding problems continue. Perdue. And rebounded by, yes, Daniel Davis. And they are absolutely and thoroughly dominating both backboards. Jordan got picked off. Miller fires. Yes. Team point Indiana lead. And Chicago wants to talk it over. Well, long jump shots mean long rebounds. And both Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen hustling and overpowering the Chicago Bulls inside right now. As Reggie Miller now coming off that screen, clearing himself from the pick, squaring up, eyeing the hoop, and draining one more three-point shot. With a 15-3 advantage, Jordan still looking for his first field goal. And there it is, Michael Jordan. Got off him because he knew Michael was thinking possible drive here, gave him the jumper, and Michael finally nails it. Antonio Davis cutting, lost his man with the pass off the mark. Here is Armstrong for three. E.J. Armstrong with his third from Davis. Again, Dale Davis with that active body keeping it alive, but Michael Jordan able to get to it. Jordan off the dribble for the pull and he draws the foul. A hack on Miller. And Jordan. And then going the other way, a little shake move on Reggie Miller. He had him beat, but decides to pull up for the jumper. Reggie knew he was beat, but would like to pull that hand back, not wanting to foul the jump shoot. Point guard position last year, but the opportunity to step. Rebound, Dale Davis. He has been the story in the first half. Seven points and 14 rebounds for Dale Davis. Well, Dale missed eight games with those shoulder problems. We say he's back, but he's really not back at 100%, but having an outstanding day. Michael Jordan. Starting to warm up right now, feeling a little bit better that he's knocked a couple of shots down and a couple of free throws, uh, taking it hard to his left his and getting in the air quickly over Canada. Reggie Miller. Tony Kukoc with an 11 for 15 and an 11 for 19 in the, the two previous games. 45 seconds to go in the half. But it's Indiana by 12. Kukoc from Pippen. Final seconds, first half. Jordan with the jumper. The tip missed. And that, is, that doesn't figure to happen when you have Michael Jordan on the court. Smiths. Rick Smiths. On the bench, a very shaky first half by Kukoc. Jordan firing it up with the shot clock running down. Blunt's pass picked up. Reggie Miller doing a good job in fronting Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen hits the three. Mm -hmm. Scotty Pippen on the rebound. Pippen for Armstrong. DJ Armstrong got that ball back to score his 13th point. Jackson met by the double team as Jordan comes over to help. Oh, Jordan swiped it from Smith. Michael Jordan with the steal. Welcome back, Michael Jordan. McKee gets it right for the bucket. Jordan lost it. Jackson with the steal. Miller with Pippen ball. And Pippen with the foul. Oh, and it's Scotty Pippen with a shot of Reggie Miller. Good job of Scotty Pippen to hustle back and try to block that shot. Did get a piece of the ball. Also got a piece of Reggie Miller, and then they got tangled up, and then an extra show with the left arm by Scotty Pippen after they come down here. And you see the left arm and the push to the back, and we will have a technical foul. Technical foul assessed on Pippen. Miller will shoot the technical. Scotty Pippen setting it up. He has Michael Jordan down low. Miller got a piece of it. Recovered by Purdue. 
Jackson leads a three on one. Here's Jackson. And the Indiana Pacers starting to take advantage of every Chicago Bull mistake. Whether it's a block shot, a ball knocked loose, they are just flat out whipping the Bulls down at the other end of the floor. Six straight points by the Pacers. They lead by 12. You are watching the NBA on NBC. Over his head. He doesn't expect anybody to steal, but it's a fundamental error by Smith as he put it behind his head. The lightning quick hands of Michael Jordan to strip it and finish the playoff at the other end. Reggie Miller thought about stepping up and trying to take the charge. It looked like Michael was ready to jump over him if he had it. As we said starting this third quarter, Marvin, Michael realizes things are just not very smooth at the offensive end. Yeah, Lee. Let's go over to him, Rashad. All right, Marv, thanks. I talked to Michael at halftime, and he was telling me that he indeed had butterflies when the game started, but he was trying to adjust himself to the pace of the game. That's pretty much took him out of it physically. He also said the offense was out of sync because you have to realize he hadn't played with these players quite in a long time. He was trying to familiarize himself with the players on the floor. Marv? At a point, getting very little out of the center position. Purdue is 0 for 3. Winnington. Has not taken a shot. Longley 0 for 2. And Tony Kukoc, only 1 for 5 from the field, has not played in this oh. third quarter. Corey Blunt starting the third. Here's Will Purdue. Oh. It will count. And the foul. And third quarter. Quick release by Reggie Miller. Yes. Break not there. Pull it back out. Set something up. Got blocked out to three. McKee. Down to six on the 24. Pippen looking for the shot. Can't find it. Kukoc has to fire and hits. Tony Kukoc for the three with the shot clock running. Reggie Miller isolated against Pete Myers. Myers got picked off. Miller not able to hit the three. Responding, getting back. Pippen. Yes. One time, Los Angeles Clippers had a solid game. They double up on McKee. Mitchell. Smartly got the ball outside to the open Mitchell. Armstrong beating Jackson. Oh. The dribble, and it's Weddington with the slam. A built thus far for Jordan. Beginning to show some signs. Doing it off the dribble here against Byron Scott. Faced the double team. Got it out to Myers. Pete Myers. Pacer 69. Pete Myers in the first round. Beat Atlanta in six. And they went to seven against the Knicks. Jordan firing the three. Myers posting up on Fleming. Kukos with the fake. Shot clock at eight. Jordan for Kukos. Yes. Michael Jordan with the feed for Tony. Behind him to spoil a chance for a Chicago fast break and a thunderous Jordan finish. Fleming. Skills. Very tough player. A good player defensively, and that's what uh, Larry Brown appreciated last year. But Mike Jackson is back as the starting point guard. They double up on Jordan. Time running out here on the third. Jordan played by Fleming. Down to five seconds. Now they double up. Here's Jordan slicing his way, setting up Weddington. One and eight, ten seconds to go in the third as Workman. Byron Scott not wanting to let Vern Fleming face Jordan. 101 comes out, but overruns the play, leaving another wide open lane for Michael to get in there, draw the defense, and get the easy one for Bill Wennington. So Michael Jordan setting up Bill Wennington to conclude matters here in the third. Michael then setting up Steve Kerr coming off a stagger, but good defense by the Pacers. Fouls up front with McKee and Antonio Davis. Not a good shot by Smith. Here's Jordan putting the move on. And Michael looking over to the official on the baseline, trying to figure out why he didn't get a foul call there. He initiated the contact into Smith. Smith. Friday night, a long meeting with his coaches the following day.
trying to solve the problem. Well, he may be on the way to solving that problem with uh, number 45. You say they've had number 45 rejoining his club. That's a nice player to add late in the season. Off the steal, Fleming. Jordan got a piece of it. Fleming ran into his own man. Here's Scott. by Jordan, who took and he's fouled. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Today's Miller Genuine Draft Genuine Moment goes back to April 12, 1987. The Bulls versus the Pacers, and a fellow by the name of Michael Jordan had an enormous game. 53 points for Michael, the most points ever scored by a Chicago Bull against the Indiana Pacers and just two off the single-game scoring mark against Indiana, which is 55 points scored by the free throw line. Of course, Michael is scoring titles. David Robinson winning it last year. Sets the tone with that pressure in the backward, really hurting the Bulls. Jordan working off the pick. Rebound, Jordan. Try to alter the shot with Smith right there. Here's a three on one. Miller pulls out for three. Well, Reggie going for the kill there right now, leading by 14, trying to put this thing away, or at least at, th at this particular juncture with that pull up jumper on the fast break from beyond the arc. Who goes past the open shot, and then a bad pass. Miller on the run. Delivers to Fleming. And you can get it in twos as well, not to get his teammates involved most of the time. Indiana by 16 points. Kerr for three. And Brown, who just recently played his 800th NBA career game. Pippen for three, yes. Scott. Right now with Jordan on the bench, he only has one other offensive player out on the court for him, at least he's shooting, as far as shooting is concerned. And Reggie Miller line. Miller has 24. Longley with the ball pick. Goes and spits again. Nice move by Luke Longley. Coming off that screen, shuffles the feet a little bit, but Pete Myers getting in a process of adjustment. Looking a bit rusty. On the other hand, we have seen some terrific flashes. Oh! Chicago, at least defensively, here in the second half. A show the ball move by Jordan. Now guarded by McKee. Longley off the up. And the Bulls, 77. Armstrong has a three on two. Pacers able to hustle back. Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen. Just when you had number 45 on the floor. 6 0 run by Chicago. Miller. Yes. That's a two pointer. Points for Miller. Indiana. Well, Reggie Miller has to depend on baseline screens like that to get open shots. And he also has to get kickouts from penetration. But Michael Jordan, hard drive. Seven point Indiana lead. They've led by as many as 18. Pippen for three. Rebound block. Armstrong backs to three point territory. And he hit it. By 16, so the Bulls try to make it another good one as they did on Friday night. Coming up short, and the rebound is fielded by Armstrong. The Chicago Bulls very much alive. Jordan posting on Miller. No help at this point. Jordan not able to hit, and it's rebounded by Dale Davis. Number 18 off the boards for Davis. McKee with the ball. Yeah! One shot by Derek McKee. He now has 16 with 2.03 left. And the ball. The Pacers lead 90 to 83, and the Bulls take a timeout.
Back in a moment at Marcus Square, you're watching the NBA on NBC. Scoreboard to check. Score and time has gotten plenty of minutes for himself. A little rusty from the field, or we should say very rusty, at just 5 for 21. Not taking advantage of a possible hand check here. Settles for jump shot, and then the Indiana Pacers will turn it into a wide open jumper on the break for Derek McKee, as once again Mark Jackson finds the open man. For 23 was a 52% shooter. You think they'll stop making all those shirts now? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Timeout rundown. Chicago 3 and a 20. And they got a 2 and a 20. The Bulls in possession. Just under 2 minutes. Remaining on the 4. Jordan swinging for the jumper. Rebound. Longley puts it on the 4. Free throw. Working 82%. Free throw shooter. Ball 16 of 24 for nine. Pacers 90. And the Bulls 84. And talking to Chicago players. Jordan with the steal. And there Jordan going. Well, he dumped it off the block and it drew the foul. Looked like he would challenge Smiths. As you say, the moves are there. He's getting the open looks, but in talking to the coaches and various Chicago players, they say that uh, the jump shot was not there in practice. At least Michael Jordan type jump shots. Well, that steal came off the... Not that the Pacers had any chance to prepare. What a 52% free throw shooter hitting one of two. It's a five-point lead. Pressure by Chicago. A minute 35 remaining on the four. Indiana's led by as many as 18. Armstrong with a steal. Feeding Pippen. Scotty Pippen cuts it to a three-point lead. And you can hear the Chicago contingent applauding the efforts of the Bulls. And it's down to three with a minute and 15 remaining on the fourth. Stakes. Indiana, a five-point lead. Well, the Bulls have been so successful with the pressure defense, and then down by three, they gambled one too many times, but that's the first two points for Indiana in the second half off the glass. Under a minute remaining, fourth quarter. Pippen, yes, that's a two-pointer for Scotty Pippen. Pacers 92, the Bulls 89. We are down to 45 seconds in the fourth quarter. Jordan looking for the steal on Smiths. Ten on the shot clock. Jackson played by Armstrong. Shot clock at five. McKee forced it. Handled by Block. And the ball in the hands of Jordan. 25 seconds remaining. The pick set by Longley. There's Pippen for Pippen. the timeout. They're just going to play it out. Down to 10. Jackson, guarded by Armstrong. Down to 5. Sets up Miller. And a foul. And Jordan. Michael did not want to make the contact. Both Jordan and Miller are shaken up. The Bulls have that foul to give, so Miller will not go to the line. Three seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And both Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller are obviously hurting. Well, Reggie Miller popped off that screen wide open, and Michael Jordan running at him, and then Reggie in trying to elude Jordan taking it to the baseline, and they got tangled up. And by the way, Michael put up his arm. I don't know, so a uh, hand admitted the foul. Let's watch again. As Michael trying to keep contact, and Reggie eludes that contact, and you see running at him, and now watch the leg. Reggie's right, and Michael Jordan's right, and both of them in a lot of discomfort right now. A bizarre conclusion with the Chicago Bulls coming from behind on a 25-9 run. 
And the two marquee players, Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, end up on the floor. We'll be right back. Market Square Arena, and on that last collision between Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan, where their legs sort of collided, Michael Jordan came out of this with a cramp. That was uh, his problem, and Reggie Miller almost a, a bruise. Their legs hit together, and Reggie Miller, the both of them appear to be all right. Reggie's still hobbling just a little bit. So it remains to be seen if Reggie Miller will still be in the game. Michael Jordan, as I said before, just suffering a cramp. Mark? All right, Ahmad, we're down to Scotty Pippen with the major three there. Now, a guy to keep your eye on here is Rick Smith after a pick is set because he presents a big target, can catch, and then make another move to score. A key throwing in for Jackson. Back to McKee for the shot. And we go to overtime. The Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers head to our overtime session. At Market Square, the Bulls 92 and the Pacers 92. Back in a moment. Bring a right five contusion. And the Pacers became very perimeter oriented by Scott. Longley, Blunt, Pippen, up front, Armstrong, Jordan in the backcourt. Jordan gets inside, try to get it to Longley. Shot clock at three. Jordan has to pump it. For the Bulls, this is their sixth overtime game. Nice back to Rejected by Dale Davis. That's his fourth. Defender. Beautiful bounce pass from Luke Longley. And Corey Blunt there and swatted out. However, the Bulls do recapture the ball. Michael Jordan. Yes. Michael Jordan. And the game is tied. Jordan. Chicago 1 and 4 in overtime games this season. Pacers have won two. They've lost four. With the answer. Comes right back at Jordan. And the Pacers popping out. Wide open for the jump shot. And now starting to feel it with the familiar tongue starting to get out there. Well, the Bulls had a lot of success coming down the stretch with just spreading the floor and creating that kind of penetration. Now, all these little things that rarely happen to Michael Jordan are happening for him today. Indiana with the ball, they lead by two. Jackson behind the back for Spence. Spence, he had it deflected. Kept it out by Dale Davis. He's Committed by Corey Block. And Rick Smith sits down. Davis connecting on one of two. Indiana leads 97 94. A minute 45 remaining in overtime. They isolate Jordan on Scott. Yes. Michael Jordan comes up hobbling. Cuts it down to one. A minute 32. Here, Michael Jordan with very poor spacing on the weak side, just able to out quick and get in the air over Byron Scott. And the leg that he hurt or had cramped earlier in that collision with Reggie Miller was the right leg. This time, Michael is pulling down the sleeve with a problem with the left one. So Jordan now 7 for 26 for 19 points. It is 42 minutes. Thank you, at NBC. <laughs> In most cases, we're, we're not quite certain about that. Byron Scott knocked away by Michael Jordan. Now both coaches going offense, defense. Rick Smith is back into the ball game right now, as is Corey Blunt replacing Steve Kerr. And they had a two of six from the field and over to Here comes Reggie Miller. So Reggie Miller, who appeared to be through for the rest of the game is ripping his way back out of the court. Shot clock at eight. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. Providing the patience with a three-point lead. 
perfect gamble there by B.J. Armstrong. Really wasn't necessary. He took himself out of the play and left Mark Jackson wide open and played a solid game. Yes, 10 points and 10 assists for Jackson. And a foul is called. On and Jackson checking call. Foul. On Jackson. First the Pacers the there. Two minutes on the Pacers. Their fourth team foul. His the next third. foul for either club would put them over the limit. And Larry Brown wanted that foul to be committed. No free throws involved to get Reggie Miller out of the ballgame right now. He is just hobbling, unable to move at all at either end of the floor. It's one out of the pages of uh, Mike Reardon. The uh, early 70s giving the foul as instructed by Larry Brown. Here's Jordan. Lost it and then regained. Block with the driving hook. Rebound McKee. Indiana by three. 40 seconds left in overtime. get that shot up and in. It has been an outstanding performance by the 33-year-old, soon to be 34, Byron Scott, who will go to the line. He's 5 of 6 at the line, 84% free throw shooter. Larry Brown of the Pacers reacting to the move by the veteran Byron. Can get into the lane and make something happen. Indiana by 5, 29 seconds to go. In overtime. Chicago, Miller with 28 and a gallant effort for the Pacers who have won it in overtime. 103 to 96. Chicago shooting only two of 13 from the field in the overtime session. And Indiana with a record of 40 and 24. Now let's go to Ahmad Rashad with Michael George. Ahmad? All right, Michael, you got one under your belt. <laughs> How does it feel? Well, as you see, my timing was a little bit off today. I mean, I was just trying to get my rhythm back, and I don't know if it was a good game for me to come back. Reggie seemed very energized, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's my first game back, and, you know, I know it's not going to happen in one game. It's going to take a little bit to I get my timing back, but... Hey, I'm back. That's all that matters. Does it concern you, though, with the playoffs so close that you will get your timing back in time? Perfect timing. I'm not worried about that. I think, you know, a couple games, I should have my timing back. But, you know, this is not a playoff game, and it's not, you know, I know we want to win, but for me, I mean, I, I really got to take my time and, and try to work my way back in. Let's clear up a few things that have come up. They're talking about you. When you coming back, you had some assurances that Scotty Pippen was going to be here and B.J. Armstrong. Is that any truth to that? I'm only back for the love of the game. I'm not back here for extra money. I'm not back here, you know, I was hoping and, and I'm still hoping that Scotty Pippen and B.J. and Phil, all those guys would be back. And, uh, you know, so it's not my place to make those decisions. But, uh, you know, quite simply, I... I hope everything works out, you know, for all three of those guys. But, you know, I'm back for the love of the game. And what about the fact that you had something that you didn't have to go to practice? Or some kind of clause that you wouldn't no, practice? No, I, I love practice. I need to practice. I cannot skip practice. I need it. You know, today he really showed me I need to get back into practice. The last question, Michael. At, you left at your peak. If you don't come back and lead this team to a championship, do you worry that this might have something mess up your mystique a bit? No, I'm not worried about that. I mean, uh, you know, you're not expected to win every time. But I'm back here to try to help my team win. And, uh... You know, we certainly got a good opportunity. Well, it was great to have you back. We'll see you next week. I hope so. All right. Thanks, Michael. Back to you, Marv. All right, Ahmad. One day after his much ballyhooed return to the NBA, Michael Jordan was back on the practice court this afternoon. And Jordan may need some time to get his shot back. He was just 7 of 28 against the Pacers. But the question is, how does that 32-year-old body feel after yesterday? You know, I was very sore last night, but I just basically soaked a little while and... 
you know, back out today. I mean, it's going to happen when you when you play like that. You haven't been playing like that for a while, and your body's going to take a little time to adjust.